Okay, welcome back. We've looked at two components now of exposure. The ISO, which is the sensitivity of the sensor, and in the last video we looked at aperture, which is the lens opening. Now the final component to getting the correct exposure is shutter speed. So now what shutter speed is, it's the speed that the shutter at the back behind the mirror moves at. And what I mean is, on the inside of a DSLR, just behind this mirror, when you take the photo, like I showed you before, the mirror flips out the way, and behind the mirror is the shutter, which is actually a mechanical shutter, and it has two curtains, and what happens is there's the first curtain moves out the way, ex exposing the sensor, and then the second curtain follows it straight away. So what happens is it exposes the sensor from the top to the bottom in a real quick motion. And the speed that that exposes the sensor is your shutter speed. So it can be really slow. For instance, if I, if I put the shutter speed on B mode, bulb mode, now some of the, some of the newer models won't have, and the entry level models won't have the B bulb mode or the B on your actual controller here, but you can access it if you choose manual, the M mode, and actually keep scrolling the shutter speed past 30 seconds, which is the fast, uh, the slowest speed, and then it'll go on to bulb. Okay. okay, so I'm in bulb mode here, so what I'm showing is the mirror flips out the way, exposes the sensor, and as I let go, that top curtain will shut down, block the sensor, and the mirror flips back. So on faster speeds, that happens really quickly. So you, that shutter, mechanical shutter is moving so quick that you don't actually, you just see like a flash and you're mostly seeing the mirror flip out the way. So that shutter speed is in seconds, either a fraction of the second or whole increments. So the entry level models usually have a shutter speed up to four, thousandth of a second. So 1 over 4,000 is the actual shutter speed, which is a real small fraction of time. In the more professional levels or enthusiast models, they can go up to 8,000. So 1 8,000th of a second, which is, is pretty quick. And, and then as that number gets smaller, the fraction gets smaller and the time period is actually longer till you get up to a second. And then these cameras can do all the way up to 30 seconds in most most models so you can actually have a take a photograph and actually open up that sh shutter for 30 seconds and expose that sensor for 30 seconds which is a really long time so th in those instances you'll really want to use a tripod so essentially shutter speed is quite easy to remember it's it's just that how quickly that shutter moves. So, in other words, how long it exposes light on the sensor. So now here we see how aperture and shutter speed both play into exposure. You've got the aperture, which lets in a certain amount of light according to how large that aperture is, and, and then how long it exposes the sensor is the shutter speed. So if you decrease that aperture, in other words, make the hole smaller, so you're letting less light in, then you have to expose the sensor for longer to get the same exposure. And it really works that if you decrease the aperture by full stop, which is actually halving the amount of light that you're letting through, then you have to double the time that you expose the sensor for. Um, so to give you a practical example, if the aperture is let's say 5.6 and your shutter speed is set to 1 60th of a second and that's your correct exposure if you take the photo at that that's fine but then if you decide to make the aperture smaller by one stop which will be f8 so that's halving the amount of light then you need to double the time that you expose this so that you'll be one thirtieth of a second. So it's kind of kind of strange because the number gets gets smaller, but it's actually in fractions of a second. So it's actually one thirtieth is 
is twice the amount of time as 1 60th. And like I said, that'll go all the way up to when you've got very little light, you'll actually be looking at whole second increments where you can set the shutter for two seconds or four seconds, depending on your situation. So in that case, if you have a two second exposure and you halve the amount of light by shutting down the aperture, then you'll need to expose the sensor by four seconds to get the same amount of light onto the sensor to get that same exposure. Now one thing that's closely related to to your shutter is the actual shooting mode. They're quite simple to understand and most cameras have have at least three modes and the, the first mode which is called the drive mode will be single shot. So if I set that to single shot now and I take a photograph even though I'm holding down the shutter it'll only take a single image and then the next mode over will be continuous. And now depending on your model you camera you may have a continuous and a high speed continuous and the high speed continuous will be taking them at the fastest frame rate that your camera can handle the fastest continuous burst rate so now what happens then is you hold down the button see so I took three shots straight after each other in continuous mode and that'll what will happen is if you hold down that shutter it'll take as many as the buffer can handle and that once again varies with cameras so some will handle like five and may, some may even be able to shoot off 20 shots depending on the particular camera you have before it, it stops and, and basically gets all that information from the buffer and puts it on the memory card. Now the other mode is the third kind of shooting mode is a timer mode. And now with this particular model it's a Canon 5D this has a 10 second timer. So what that means is you, you press the button and you'll notice there's a little light flashing and that after 10 seconds it'll take the exposure. So there we go. So we have our shot after 10 seconds. Now on some of the newer model cameras, DSLRs, you'll actually have an option to set that to 2 seconds. So if it's 10 seconds is great if you want to set it up on a tripod and you want to press a button and you want to run around and begin the photograph yourself. But sometimes you don't want it to be that long so you can set it to a two second self timer so that lets you just press the button and wait two seconds it takes a shot and that's handy if you don't actually want to push it with your hand and have that chance that you might move the camera that's good for like longer exposures where you want to press the button and then you want to take your hand off the camera and then let it take the photograph after two seconds so that way you're not pushing on the camera and there's less chance of of moving the camera getting camera shake so those are your drive modes. So quite simple to understand and if you just look in your manual and find out where you can access those drive modes. Usually, usually there's a button on the top but that will vary. Now that we've learned about shutter speed, we can experiment a bit with shutter speed by turning our command dial to, on Canons it'll be TV which means time value and on Nikons it's a little bit more intuitive, it's an S for shutter speed. So now what happens if we set it to that mode and we look through our viewfinder as we scroll our command button once again on the Nikons it's going to be on a lot of them on the back here on the Canons you have the command dial here so you half press the shutter and you scroll and you'll notice that what you're doing is you're actually changing that shutter speed and what happens is the aperture will change accordingly so as you make the shutter faster the aperture will open up to the point where if you don't have enough light you can keep moving the shutter faster and faster and it'll get to the point where the shutter where the aperture is at the maximum and then it'll, there'll be some indication in your viewfinder it'll start flashing and saying that's you know it's not able to get the correct exposure with the Canons it just the actual aperture value flashes and in the Nikons the actual exposure bar might move move off to the, the right and then start flashing and say okay I can't get the correct exposure here I'm, un I'm underexposing. So what I often do is even though you can put it on shutter speed priority on your camera to take photographs and use the correct shutter speed I actually mostly use and a lot of other professionals do too I mostly use aperture priority and I use 
uh, manual mode for photographs. And the way I do it with aperture priority is, so in a lot of situations I actually want the fastest shutter speed available in that given light. So rather than setting it to shutter priority though, I actually set it to aperture priority and I just dial it up to the widest aperture because I know that, like for instance, this is a, a 2.8 lens. So I just scroll it over 2.8 and leave it on that and it'll use the fastest shutter speed that it can in those light conditions. And that could vary, so it'll, it'll constantly adjust it. So it may be a 60th of a second or 125th, depending on exactly where I am in the scene. But I know I'm maximizing the shutter speed because I've set it to as much light as I can. So, so in some instances where I've, I've set the aperture as wide as I can, so I know that's as much light as I can let in, and I find I'm not going to get a fast enough shutter speed to what I want. It may be either too slow and it's going to blur if I move slightly and I don't have a tripod or for some other reason I want to freeze some motion with a faster shutter speed. Then in those cases that's when I reach to the ISO and I'll incrementally increase the ISO so that gets to the point where I can use the shutter speed that I want. Now that I've explained shutter speed and, and we've looked at aperture now, we've looked at shutter speed, I've shown you how to go from your auto mode and I've shown you going to aperture priority or A or AV and now I've shown you how to go on to shutter priority TV or S on the on the Nikons now now that you've learned that you can actually turn over to manual now the difference with manual mode is it doesn't automatically balance out the shutter speed and the aperture so it's a when you look through your viewfinder now, you'll notice if you increase the shutter speed, immediately it'll start underexposing your image and you'll notice that actual exposure bar will move around showing you whether you got correct or incorrect exposure. So now it's not going to automatically center itself to correct the exposure. So now depending on your camera, this one, with this one when you're in manual mode you move the control scroll here, the command scroll button and your shutter speed will change and then you rotate the command dial down here and that will change your your aperture. Now one of the tricks that a lot of people if they have a, a Canon 5D you'll notice that if you have there's an off position, an on position and then there's a second on position and that activates that controller for certain settings. So if you just have it from off to on and you're looking through your camera and you're trying to set the, you set the shutter speed manually and then you, set, you try to set the aperture manually, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't actually move your aperture value. And that's because you actually need to set it onto that second position which activates that scroll, scroll button. So now if I move it up and down, it's actually moving the aperture. So we've got shutter speed, aperture, so now to get a correct exposure, what you've got to do is you actually have to scroll the aperture to what you want and then you've got to sh scroll the, sh the shutter, shutter speed to what you want. So let's say there's a particular aperture you want, let's say you want a very wide aperture, you, you'll first set your aperture to the widest, in this case I can set it to 2.8, and then I scroll that shutter speed so that that exposure value is in the center and then I have the correct exposure according to my scene and the metering mode you know it's like I mentioned in the earlier videos with exposure and ISO it may be, I may be using center weighted where it's it's biasing it 75 percent towards the center or I may be just using the more advanced method which is evaluative or matrix metering where it's actually taking into account what's in focus and it's actually breaking your scene into little blocks and calculating the best exposure for that. In manual mode you can take the photograph, you, correct the ex you set it so it's the correct exposure and then you take the shot but then you still want to look at your histogram to see if you're actually happy with that exposure and with manual exposure if you're not happy with it then you can just either like let's say if I look at this and I say well it's kind of kind of uh, underexposing a bit, I'd like to move it one stop more. So what you can do there is you can either 
slow down the shutter speed a bit or you can open the aperture. But in this case I've already reached the maximum so in this case I have to use a sh slower shutter speed and then I take another shot. So with manual exposure you can correct directly by moving the aperture of the shutter speed. Now if you're in the other modes that's that's a little trickier. So for instance if I'm in aperture priority mode which is A or AV now when I take the photo the camera is going to automatically calculate what it considers the correct exposure. So I take a shot and I say okay well I'm kind of happy kind of happy with it but I'd like to I'd like to um, expose it a bit more. I'd like to basically brighten it a little bit. So what happens is if you try brighten it by slow down the shutter speed, the aperture will go down. So it'll, it'll balance to that same exposure. But what these cameras have is a mode where you can actually compensate for that called exposure compensation. And that's basically saying, okay, this is what the camera sees as the correct exposure, but I'd prefer a little lighter or I'd prefer a little darker. So exposure compensation allows you to do that. So how it works is some of the cameras you can access it on the LCD display. Depending on, um, in this particular camera, what you do is if you have aperture priority, you change the aperture at the top there, but this bottom scroll bar allows you to compensate. So that way, it's uh, overexposed by one stop, and I take the same shot. Then I can have a look at the image and say, okay, well, that's a little bit better. It's a little bit too far. And then you could take it back a third of a stop and adjust it till you're happy with it. So now, I'll actually show you on a newer model camera how there's two ways that you can actually get that exposure compensation. So I've got a, the Canon... 60D again, a more recent model camera. And with this one, when you're in aperture value, aperture priority here, you can look through the viewfinder and then compensate for exposure by rotating this dial down the bottom, just like on the 5D. And that's actually visible through the, the LCD display too. So you can actually look at that and you'll see you have to press the half press the shutter button though for that to be activated. So then you take your shot and then it'll be overexposed by whatever amount or underexposed by whatever value. And you'll notice it'll stay there. So that overexposure will keep staying there till you switch off the camera or half press and adjust that back to the center or underexpose again. So that value so let's say you're in a scene where you want to underexpose by a whole stop. Let's say you're trying to do like a silhouette or something, maybe even two stops. You want to underexpose by two stops. You set it to that and you can take a shot. That'll actually show it quite an underexposed image there. Let me just show you. So, so that's the idea. Like I've got the window frame there silhouetted. And if you can see the histogram there, We've got all the information, a lot of information stacked against the back there and the middle information is the blue sky there. So that's underexposing it. But I'm doing it if I want to do a silhouette. And what happens is that'll actually stay like that. So if I now take a shot inside, it's going to be quite underexposed all around. So to get off that mode, I have to either switch the camera off or half press the shutter and recenter that Exposure, exposure compensation. Another way to get to that mode on these cameras, that's probably the easiest because you can be looking through the viewfinder and you just half press and scroll that thing to compensate. But you can actually go into this quick menu mode on this particular camera. And you notice it's in the quick menu mode, there's a bunch of different settings you can change directly here on this menu. And one of them is that shows that exposure scale is the compensation. So there, once again, you can set it left or right. So let's say you've underexposed by a stop and you take some images. Then you'll notice that it actually stays at that value. Whether you set it through the scroll bar, the compensation, or whether you set it through this quick menu, 
Q menu, then either way it's going to stay, that value is going to stay until you, until you zero it. So you can actually use, the but in this camera you can actually use the buttons or you can scroll it to, to compensate. So setting it back to zero will be back to what the com camera considers correct exposure. So that sums up exposure compensation. So you just need to look at your manual, find out where you set it for your particular camera. This was just a, a quick introduction on how you can see that in the Canons, but I want you to understand more the concept and then you can easily look up in your manual where to actually find those values. And finally, the last way I'm going to show you of compensating for exposure is called exposure bracketing. Now that's useful if you want to take a few images in a row at different exposures so that way you can compare which is the best exposure and it'll also be used in one of the gold member videos called HDR or HDRI. So how you find that on some of the older models it may be a menu option so you may have to go into the menus and here we scroll down to AEB which means automatic exposure bracketing. So if we activate that you'll notice when we do the scroll bar you can actually, you get these two lines and, and they separate by either by one stop or by two stops. So with this camera you can effectively take three photos, two stops underexposed, normal exposure and two stops overexposed. So those increments can be anywhere from, from a, third of a, a third of a stop to full stop increments. Now on some of the newer models they can even go up to five stops difference. Let me show you on a newer model what I'm talking about. So like with this, with this camera, with the 60D here, I'm in my Q menu so I can activate that exposure compensation, exposure bracketing and now if I scroll the top scroller it'll actually separate, you'll see those lines separate, now that's showing it's going to take three exposures separated by as much as you choose there. This actually allows you to separate them by three stops over and three stops under but you can actually shift that whole range so you can have you can basically shift it over so they a normal exposure three stops underexposed and six stops underexposed and vice versa you could drag it that way. It's a really handy feature for taking multiple different exposures values all at the same time. Now a little trick with that is when you, when you do choose one of those modes, if you have it on single shot you'll have to take three shots separately in a row, and, but it's better to put your drive mode to multiple shots. So that way you can actually hold it down and it automatically takes the three shots straight after each other. So a much quicker way of doing it. So that gives you a normal exposure, and underexposed and an overexposed. Now another trick with that is if you're using a tripod and that and you want to just have those three shots go off without you actually touching the camera, you should set your drive mode to timer, self timer mode. So that way when you do it you can, like in this case I can set it to two second self timer. So now if I press the self timer it's going to count down two seconds and then immediately take all three shots without me having to press the shutter. So we have our normal exposure, what the camera considered correctly exposed, our underexposed, you can see the histogram moving that way, and our overexposed shot. So that's very, a very useful tool. So those are some tips on how you can use exposure bracketing. So now we've covered different, different modes of exposing our image and the whole point of this course is really to get you to get off that auto button and the most creative modes really are that, that shutter priority, TV or S, your aperture priority mode and in fact I usually sit on aperture priority most of the time and I just scroll the apertures to whatever I want and if I want a particular shutter speed then I'll actually keep scrolling the aperture till it gives me the shutter speed I want. 
So I find I use that most. And then occasionally you'll want to use manual if you're doing something very specific. And we'll go in more into manual modes and how to use those creatively in, in the gold member videos like Let's Get Creative. But knowing how to set your camera to those three modes and experimenting with those modes is really all you need. Because all these other special modes like portrait and sports are really just the camera deciding what's the best way of shooting those modes. But once you have an idea of what shutter speed, aperture and all that do, you basically can set those yourself according to, that's basically taking the thought out of it. So, so for instance, sports will use a faster shutter speed. So really those special modes that you have on your camera are really for people who, who want to just quickly turn it to something and not have to think about the settings. But to actually know what those settings are, you find you won't even use those. You'll actually be in the, in the creative mode section of your camera more because you know what you're dealing with. So you're not just relying on the camera's suggestions for taking photos the way you want. And then you find you've got a lot more creative control over your photos. So the, with shutter speed being one of the key values, the, the point of understanding shutter speed is knowing the effect on your photographs. And essentially what it is, is the shutter, sp shutter is letting it in light for a certain duration onto the sensor. Now if that's really quick, on one hand you're having a lot less light onto the sensor, but on the other hand it's able to freeze motion. So it's taking a smaller slice of time. So this is important if you're taking like a sports photograph, someone throwing a baseball or, or swinging a tennis racket really fast, and you actually want that motion frozen then you really want to have a fast shutter speed like a thousandth of a second and beyond because you want a really thin slice of time to capture that moment. And likewise on the other hand if you actually want some kind of blurring of the motion if you have that longer time period you've actually taken a longer slice of time so a slower shutter speed is a longer slice of time so things can move while that shutter's open and that'll actually create blurring effects. So that's important for two reasons. One is if you, if you want a sharp photograph, the, the shutter speed is important because when you're taking a photograph and it's handheld, then there is a slight movement. There's a chance of moving the camera slightly as you press the button, unless you have a super steady hand. So a good rule of thumb is if you look at what lens you have on your camera, so in this case it's a 35 millimeter lens then you don't you want to have a shutter speed that's 1 35th of a second and that'll pretty much freeze the motion so for instance if you have a 50 millimeter lens on your camera you want to set the shutter speed to at least 1 50th of a second so it's a general rule of thumb unless you sort of really crazy with your movement that'll you should get a reasonably fr frozen image and the other potential for creating movement blur is a moving subject as well so if there's if you're just trying to get people in their normal movements and that you really want to be around 1 50th or above shutter speed just to make sure that whatever natural movements someone has is not going to be blurring. So to get a sharp image that doesn't have motion blur from moving the camera or, or the subject moving, it really depends on how quick that movement's going to be, what shutter speed you need. So like real fast action, like a race car zooming by, you, you're pretty much going to need to set it to the fastest shutter speed that your camera can handle and that will give you a, a pretty frozen image and also when you zooming in why that why I had that rule of thumb like if you have a 50 millimeter lens you want 50th of a second at least the same holds true if you have a 200 millimeter lens you want at least 200th of a second so because what's happening there is you're zooming closer in so movements get exaggerated so you need a faster shutter speed to compensate for that now some lenses actually have image stabilization so that'll help you'll be able to use slower shutter speed and still achieve a fairly sharp result because they have lens elements that actually will compensate for that movement
So that's why those lenses are very expensive. It's actually quite a complex mechanism that adjusts adjusts for slight for for the actual lens moving to allow you get a sharper image even though there's some movement of the camera when it takes the photograph. Now having said that if there's something if there's a lot of movement in the scene image stabilization is not generated for that it's really for the movement of your camera allowing you to get steadier shots. Now in situations where you need to use a really slow shutter speed and you're having trouble holding the shot steady because you're needing speeds lower than a 50th of a second, that's when a tripod comes in handy. You need some steady surface so that you can have a nice stable shot when you release the shutter. Okay, that should give you a fairly good understanding of, of where shutter speed fits in with aperture and ISO to create your exposure. Now I'm going to show you a few examples and zoom in on the pictures so that you can see them at the full resolution and see what that effect of that shutter speed is on the image. In this example I'm going to show you some of the effects of shutter speed on on this little fountain here so you can see how if you have a really fast shutter speed it's going to freeze that motion of the water drops and with the slower one you're going to get more of a blurring and I can show you the different speeds on how much blurring you get and I, I'm also going to do a really slow shutter speed and because this is bright sunlight I'm going to need a little extra help with that because it's going to be too bright so I'm going to have to set my ISO way down to 100 I've got a polarizing filter on here but I'm also going to add another item which is the a neutral density filter so this blocks out the light for about three stops so that really cuts down the light and lets you use a slower shutter speed. But what I'm going to do is take, I'm going to take a couple of the faster ones first and show you what I'm talking about. So here we go. I'm using the lens hood here too because we're shooting kind of towards the sun and there's a good chance of lens flare. So here we go. We've got, in this case, we're going to have it all the way up to I'm actually setting the ISO higher here, 640, just so I can get a really fast shutter speed. And so there we go, you can see really a lot of uh, frozen movement there in the drops. And now let's take it all the way down to like 500, which is a kind of a, a reasonably fast shutter speed and it's fast enough for s some action. But in this case, you can see it's, you still might see a, a slight bit of blurring. So yeah, so the, the droplets are frozen, but not quite as much as the faster shutter speed. And then we take it all the way down to, let's take it to 1 25th of a second. And, and a bit more blurring still. And now I'm actually going to put it on a tripod. Okay, now if you, if you have a ball head tripod, you can pretty much get in any angle you want, but with this particular one, I actually have to rotate the plate on it to be able to get the portrait shot I want. So that way, now when I place it in the, the lock, I have more control over that shot because I can tilt it this way and that way. Whereas the standard plate position doesn't allow you to have those axes of movement. I'm using autofocus just to lock on the subject. I'm going to go more into that in the next, in the autofocus videos. Okay, so now we're going to pull down the shutter speed to 50th of a second. And okay, 50th of a second. Now with the lower speeds, I don't want the effect of me pushing the shutter because I don't have a remote with me. So that alternative method is where you set your drive method to, I'm going to set it to a two second delay using the timer. So now I can press a button, two seconds later it takes a shot and I don't have to think about, you know, probably moving the camera. Okay, so that's 50th. Now let's get a little lower than that. Okay, we're all the way down to to 15th of a second, 15, 20, it's kind of hovering between that. So, yep, 15th of a second, 
and we're at F22. Okay, so now to get lower shutter speeds, I'm going to turn down the ISO all the way down to 100. Okay, so set it to 100. Now we can get an eighth of a second now. So we got eighth of a second at F13. Okay. Okay, great. So now we're really starting to see that that water blurring. And now, as I mentioned, if I really want to get a long exposure and it's daytime like this, we've got sunlight, I can bring out a neutral density filter and that's going to cut the light even more and allow me to even use a lower shutter speed than I normally would in these conditions. Because now I've got the lowest ISO here that I can go to. So that's, that's limited now. And it's going to get to a point where I have the smallest aperture and then to really get slower shutter speeds in these light conditions, I need to add something to cut the light down. So I'm adding that neut neutral density filter. We just put that lens hood on, just so we don't get lens flares. And now that's dropped it by three stops. So it dropped the light quite dramatically. And I'm going to give you an extreme example. I'm going to set it to f22, smallest aperture. We've got the smallest ISO possible, 100 ASA. And that gives me a, a shutter speed of two and a half seconds, which is remarkably slow for, for a daylight shot. Let's try that out. Great, so that really gives you that effect of, of a long shutter speed and what it does with movement. We're going to go a little bit more into this in the nature videos as well with, with rivers and waterfalls. But that'll certainly give you a good idea of what shutter speeds can do. Okay, well that wraps this up and we'll have a couple of examples on the computer to show you and see how those worked out. Now I'm going to show you some photos with the fast shutter speed to show you how that freezes movement as well as slower and you can see the blurring effect if you have a slower shutter speed. But sometimes that's useful if you want that, if you want to generate that look of speed, sometimes it's just a frozen image, it doesn't really portray speed. So one of the techniques is to actually have a slower shutter speed and you track your object, whatever's moving and that way you get blurring in the background but your object's frozen and that gives you much more of a sense of speed than just a, a totally frozen image. So I'm going to take some sh skateboard shots here and to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, okay so I'm pre-focusing and tracking. So that gives us a, a nice blurred background but the person's quite in focus. So I'll just take a few, few more shots at different shutter speeds and show you what that does. Mm -hmm. 